You are now watching a Lucky Penny Shop product feature. Hey, it's Lucky Penny Shop. Thanks for stopping by today. I appreciate it. You caught me right at the point where I was going to rinse off some of my tools in my dishwasher. By the way, if you want to learn more about this kitchen, I'll put a link in the description area. I made a video of all the behind the scenes of everything that I use in this mini kitchen. I do want to say thank you for taking the time to stop by and watch this video. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. I am making the chocolate mousse cake from the light bulb baking book from Todd Coopy. I have my little recipe up there. But some good news. I'm uh, going to be featured on a website called toytales.ca. I'll put that information up in the description area so you can check it out. They're going to be grabbing some of my videos and uh, uh, basically featuring them there with other toy collectors and historians. All right, back to the chocolate mousse cake. I've got most of my ingredients up here. Let me do a little more prep and then we'll get started on the chocolate mousse cake. Now, I also went through all of the different recipes that were part of the Easy Bake Championship series. This is one of them. A recipe by Alexandra Stewart. This is from 2000 Easy Bake Baker of the Year contest winner. So let's just see here. We have chocolate mousse cake. It cakes two Easy Bake Oven Brand chocolate cake mixes, which are there. Two Easy Bake Oven Brand chocolate icing mixes. Got it. One package chocolate mousse mix, which I was able to find. A quarter cup pecans that are crushed, which I still need to do for you. And then the recipe does say one small package M&Ms, but I don't think that is for this recipe. It's for the one on the next page because the description for making the recipe doesn't include the M&Ms. Then some whipped cream and one small strawberry, which I'll get later. So let's continue prepping and get ready to make the chocolate mousse cake. All right, so this calls for a half a cup of pecans, or pecans, however you say it. Let's not get caught up in the pronunciation. Let's just enjoy what we do. All right, here we go. Now I'm gonna use my little chopper here. We'll see how it works. I haven't used this one in a while. We'll just put a few in and see how it chops. Ooh, it's catching good. There's just something about the vintage kitchen items and the squeaky sounds. I don't know. I enjoy it. I'll put a few more in there. All right, so I'm going to continue getting these all crushed. And then we'll move on to the next step of prep. Anytime you bake, you know the best thing to do is get as much as you can prep. So you can just focus on the recipe and focus on making sure you're doing everything right. Double check, double check all those measurements. One wrong measurement in the baking department can lead to a disaster.
All right, here we go. Time to make the two Devil's Food Cake Mixes. Now, it actually calls for two because you're stacking one on top of the other. Now, what we noticed on the first one was that the scaling of the mixes was not proportionate to the scale of Easy Bake. That one had a bunch of milk and uh, oh, I needed one and a half teaspoons for this. So this is the teaspoon side. Yeah, so it was a full mix of the Cool Whip on that one. Remember that? One and a half. So like this one, there was no like mini chocolate mousse in packs. I had to grab a full pack. That's what you saw in the video earlier. Just mix with this. So here again, same situation. I had to get a full mousse mix because it requires that requires two cups of milk. Now my one and a half teaspoon of water was from the book for this oven, and it does not look like enough. Now some of the easy bake mixes had a little bit more water, so I'll probably add just a little bit more but we're gonna go another half a teaspoon some of the cake mixes were three teaspoons like the last one I did so that would be two teaspoons I'm just gonna do the three teaspoons just to be safe because I think that's what you need to make the chocolate cake so the mixes uh, the recipes for these don't actually it just says make the cake per instructions. Oh, that looks good. I remember the ones I made last, two weeks ago was it? Three weeks ago? They were much, uh, much, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Easier to pour. This will work. Okay, let's get this one in the greased pan. And I was going to actually do both, and then I'll get them into two ovens, because I want to use the other oven today. All right, here we go. Yeah, not as smooth as the vanilla. I'm kind of using the edge to hold it in, and I'll clean that up a little bit. I think overall, though, it's going to bake just fine. I'll get it away from the edge. Oops. Stay there. Okay, that one's looking good. All right, let's get that one in the Easy Bake Oven. All right, I haven't got that in the oven yet because it is still heating up. But this one said for the cake, one and a half teaspoons. That must just be for the vanilla cake or certain of the years of the mixes. I don't know, I've seen some variants there, but let's not worry about it. Let's just do three. Or maybe this one I could do a little bit more. I don't think they ever want more than three, though. The three seem to work, but let me go all the way to the top. Just a little bit more water. Two and three. There you go. Put that in the sink. We're done with that for now. Uh, let's use the spoon. Now 
I have to say it's easier to mix with the wood spoon than that spatula. This one seems to be a little bit more pourable. Yeah, look at that. That one came out much better. Much smoother, too. Maybe filling the water to the top made it better. Okay, let's see. There we go. It doesn't look as dark either. Let me grab the other one. It just could be the combo of mixes. I don't know. Look at the two different colors. So I don't know. Maybe it's uh, maybe you have some ideas. I'm not sure. Right. Both ovens should be heated up. So let's get them in the ovens. Okay. Let's do the easy bake oven first. And now this one. Just open the door and put it in. Okay, dual ovens. All right, let's set the timer and we'll check them and say, let's do six minutes. All right, it's been six minutes. Let me check this one. The one on the right in the Easy Bake, it's not too easy to take out. So let me just check this one. It's going to bake a little hotter. It's close. Let me try one more spot. All right, let me give this another. It's pretty good, actually. I'll get another minute and then I'll take that cake out. All right, cake number one is done. Let us put that up on the top. All right, and cake number two should be close, so I'll grab that one in a few minutes. All right, cake number two is ready. You just push it in and it comes out in this little pan pusher and then the temperature gauge on there will tell you when it's cooled. Now this one is much fluffier than the other one. I might have to make another one because remember the mixes didn't seem right. I'll make another one, I'll bake it and then come back, but at least we now know that uh, we're good to go. I'll be right back. All right, cake number three is going in. I guess you just never know when baking. Now, believe it or not, you may think, oh, just go and order Easy Bake Deluxe Food Cake Mixes. They never made them as an individual separate mix. Uh, well, they did, but early on. Hard to find them now. You have to find them in sets or that came out of another oven. So uh, we'll just see. Let's bake this third one. Then I have a backup and we'll see how it goes. Okay, third cake is ready to come out of the oven. If you look, cake number two had a little edge issue from this actually when I tried to take it out. So it raised up and puffed up real nice. Nothing I can do about that. All right, there is cake number three. Let me let these cool down and we'll continue on. All right, I wanted to show you the cakes real quick. They came out pretty nice. Uh, this one definitely looks different than the other two. Bottom came out nice. This one pretty nice as well. So I, what I think I might do is just combine these two to make one layer because they're thinner and then use that one as the top layer. Haven't officially decided yet, but I'm ready to start mixing the frosting and the mousse. So let's do that. All right, so there's a lot going on. It called for two cups of milk to make this mousse mix. Very much like the last one when I needed to add all that milk. But first, it says make the frosting. Let's see. Mix, oh, mix icing per package directions. Now, it was two icings. One's going to do the sides and one's going to do the top. I was hoping I can put them together in one bowl. Let's see how this fits. Now, normally it's half a teaspoon for the icings of water. It doesn't take much. Well, let's see. Well, let me do this. Let me mix one in this and then I'll mix the other in its own bowl. So half a teaspoon of water. No, it doesn't seem like a lot. It never does, but then it uh, it eventually works out. So what I want to make sure though is that this one is to roll on the side. So I don't want it too thin. So I'm going to be very careful mixing this. Okay, so that's definitely not enough. So we'll see. Now this says frosting, not icing, but I think they meant the same thing. Easy bake frosting. Okay, so now two. I know two. Oh, there we go. Let's see. I'm starting to change consistency. I want this one a little thicker, I guess. I 
because the packs don't give you the original mix amount, uh, the water to mix ratio. Like I said, these packs maybe, this one maybe came out of an oven from a certain year, I don't know. And uh, we'll see. So now we're up to one and a half, so one and a half teaspoons. Let's see if that does it. I wish I could be more precise for you, but it's hard when you're using mixes that are not specific. Okay, I think that looks pretty good, actually. So one and a half. That might be enough for the whole thing, but we'll see. I can mix up another batch in a minute. If I need it last minute. Okay, yeah, I think that's going to roll nice. All right, so let's set that off to the side. Now we're going full scale and doing the chocolate mousse. That was two cups of milk and this big bowl. So it says on the instructions on the box, this was actually from this box. It's from a Hershey's pie, chocolate mousse pie. So beet filling mix with and milk with mixer on low speed for 30 seconds and then on medium speed for three minutes. So I'm going to have to bring in a big mixer. But before I reposition here, I want to get this mix in the bowl. Now who knows what they did during the competition, what they were allowed to use. They were able to definitely use bigger quantities for items that were not Easy Bake related. All right, and then two cups of milk. Let's see, Let's, let me get my camera in a better position here and then we'll do the next step. Okay, it says low speed for 30 seconds. Let me get the liquid in here. Two cups. Now this particular handheld mixer, this is low, this is the first speed. I guess that's low. Just seems kind of fast to me, but let's see. 30 seconds. Starting to get thick. It says it's supposed to be thick, and that's what we want. Definitely starting to thicken up. Now that's going to be a layer, so it's got to be nice and thick.
three minutes. I'm going to give it another, say, 20 seconds by the time I stop. Ooh, all right. So let's move this. I'm going to now scale this down to a smaller bowl and let's assemble our cake. Okay, so now it wants me to ice the sides of each cake. But remember, I think I'm going to join this one since it's so thin with this one. I'll just put a little bit in the middle. This is not the way it was originally intended, but I have to kind of run with what I have. Let's get that there. Let's get this one on this one. I think that one's somewhat thick enough. And let's just spread this out, kind of make a glue. You don't see this. You don't see what I'm doing here. There we go. Now, it wants me to ice the side. Well, this needs to be mixed a little bit better, I just noticed. Okay. So there's no real easy way to do this. I'll have to just make it work. Let's actually move this cake out of the way. I'll probably will need that other frosting. Because this has to be rolled in the pecans. I just need the frosting to do the edges of these. I think I have enough to do that. I don't really need this. It's adding an extra twist to the kitchen. Okay. That one's ready. So at some point, you gotta pick these up and roll them in the pecan. But I think since I have the plate, I can just do it in the plate and then move them to my final presentation plate. What do you think? I've seen bakers where they have this whole tray of their side topping. They hold the cake in their hand and they just kind of whip it on there from the side, not necessarily roll it. So I haven't really decided in this situation what's going to be the best way to do this. Okay. I like that. All right, a little prep clean up here. Let's get the pecans on the side. Okay, I haven't really thought this through. Uh, because I've never done it before. So let's just see. I have a special spatula, like a larger one. Let's see if I can grab this one off the stand, off my little plate first. And it just kind of like... That's my thought behind it. Hopefully the other one's easier. I mean, as easy. Okay, that looks good. Missed a spot. Make sure I get enough on there. Yeah, ooh, look at that. Okay, there's cake number one. 
I need to find out if I can pick up cake number two since it's two, two layers. Oh yeah, look at that. And I glued it together, remember? Okay, there we go. I would say that's pretty good. All right, a little more prep time. Let me get that other uh, mix ready. And then uh, the frosting, let's do that. And then we'll keep continue on here. Okay, frosting number two. Now we know, put more water in. So let's go two teaspoons to start. Actually, let's go one teaspoon. Remember, I was doing by halves and then a half. See how this one is? Because again, it's a separate mix. Maybe, like the cakes, they just ended up being a little different. Looking good. Okay, I think we got it. Nice. Plus when it sets a little, it will firm up, but there we go. Okay, so let that set up. Let me bring in all my supplies now. My moose, and let's assemble. Okay, I have the rest of the supplies uh, ready to go. So now it says to assemble, spread mousse on top of one of the cakes until it is a half inch thick. All right, half inch thick, I can do that. Let's get this. Now I decided to make this one the bottom because it's got that issue and we'll just see. We'll see how it goes, half inch. looking pretty good, huh? See how the mousse is really set up nice? Okay, I'll tell you what, I'll put a little bit more in the middle so when I squish it down, it makes a nice little um, pressure, little, gives it a little pressure, and then it'll push it out to the edges a little bit more. Now ice the top of this one. Let's get this out of the way. Grab this. Okay, so back to the icing. All right, that should be plenty. Just let that slide around. Actually, the nuts kind of hold it all in. A nice layer of icing. Okay. There you go. There's the two layers. Now it says... Arrange cake so that the mousse is in the middle and the icing is on the top. Okay, that's what I want to do. That's what I'm going to do. We have another spatula here. So it looks like this will be my presentation plate. So let's clean this up a little bit. Yes, there we go. That's better. And then this one goes on top of this one. It's going to happen. Here we go. It's going to be gentle. See, now it's pushing out the layer. Okay. All right. Then it says, oddly enough, it says sprinkle the top with whipped cream. Sprinkle. How do you sprinkle whipped cream? Let me grab a spoon here. Okay. So sprinkle. I'm just going to put a nice little dollop in the middle. That's my sprinkle. There we go. Okay. And then 
Next is a piece of strawberry. It says, if desired, top with a small strawberry. But I'm gonna do a couple of slices. As my topping accoutrement. How's that? Okay. Wow, you can't waste that. That one, the last two pieces. All right. There is my chocolate mousse cake. I've got to cut into this and give it a taste. All right, before we lose the whipped cream, let's get some milk in the cups. I really have not considered how I'm going to actually cut this or present it to the judges. Here you go, judges. This is a very special cake that I used to make with my mom when I was young. No, that's, you know, you got to tell a story with what you're doing, right? Okay, look at that. Let's get this out of the way. Let's move this one back. You don't really know until you start prepping what it's going to take. All right, let's do this, 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 and this to get the whole final presentation. And what am I going to cut this with? I've got the small knife. Oh good, you're not actually seeing the final presentation yet because the camera won't show it to you. There you go. That right there is the one side. That's not my presentation side. I'm bringing it to the judges like this. There you go, you are the judge. Tell me what you think. I'll give you a zoom in before I actually dismantle it. How's that? There, there's my final presentation to the judges. Now I think I'm gonna take a fork and try to at least hold it before I do the cut. I'll just hold it here like this because I feel like the cakes are gonna be too hard. Here, I'll just do it down here. That'll be easier. It's mushy in the middle. There we go, I got a piece. Okay, and then a little of this. And then one strawberry topper. There. Ooh, I gotta cut you a piece. I don't think it's gonna cut through that easily when it's so mushy, so I'll give you this piece down here. My stomach is growling. Did you hear that? Okay. This is for you, the judge. I think my stomach is... Uh, I haven't eaten anything, so it's telling me, eat. Oh, okay, that's the best I can do. All right, so I get to try it. First off, tell me what you think in the description area. If you're enjoying this little mini-series, let me know. It is, a, it is, you know, you start off thinking one thing or it's going to happen one way and then you go in another direction. But you really don't know because it's all basically experimentation, isn't it? Because I, I'm i grabbing mixes from other sets and trying to think what they were thinking when they actually made this. So here we go. Here is the final taste. If you don't like chewing sounds, uh, well, here's the final piece, me tasting. So if you don't like chewing sounds, this would be the time. Here we go. Mmm. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. It's very nice. You get the crunch of the nuts, because they're on the side. I got that, and I got the frosting. So I was able to taste the whole thing. So you're the judge, right? I'll taste your piece, too, since you're the judge. And that's it. That is the contest winner number two from the year 2000. And next is the Marshmallow Cloud on a Heart. And again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I had fun making it for you. Later. If you're looking for the item you just saw in the video, click here. Watch more videos by clicking here. Don't forget to share on social media and give a thumbs up. Hey, LPS Dave. What's up, Butch? Make sure they don't forget to subscribe. Oh yeah, please click here to subscribe to Lucky Penny Shop.
You can always remember when you see a lucky penny, pick it up.